Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I've got an episode of Mailbox, the series where you guys can ask me any questions that you can think of. The way you do this is you just leave your question in the comments section down below, rate up questions that you'd like me to answer, and uh, I will do my best to answer them on the next episode of Mailbox. First question today comes from Dregkar, who says, If you could add a vehicle to the game, what would it be and what would its main purpose be? Also, if you could remove one re vehicle from the game, what would it be and why? Can't say the AC-130? That's too easy. Alright, I'll start off with what vehicle I would remove. I would take out the mobile artillery, just because I hate the whole concept of mobile artillery in a video game. It's boring. Uh, everybody who's getting killed by it hates it. It's been used in just terrible situations on rush maps where like an armored kill the attacking team gets one so everybody defending is just having to hang out by these MCOMs that are constantly getting shelled by mobile artillery fire. It's just, it's a cool vehicle, there's nothing, nothing wrong with the vehicle itself but it really is meant for combat that I don't think is fun and shouldn't exist in Battlefield 3 so I would get rid of mobile artillery. As for adding a vehicle to the game, the first thing that pops to mind is the Apache Attack Helicopter. They had it in Bad Company 2, they've had it in Battlefield 2. Where is it in Battlefield 3? I love that helicopter, I want my Apache back. In addition to that, let's give it the ability to do barrel rolls and flips. The thing can do that in real life, you could do that with helicopters in Battlefield 2 even though the flight mechanics were a little bit wonky, but uh, I would like a little bit more advanced flying for choppers. Next question comes from RhinoFilms23 says, How long have you been with Mrs. Level Cap? Um, we've been together almost four years now. Uh, coming up in late December will be our four year anniversary, and we've been married for over two years now. The next question comes from Mr. Coco Leon, who asked, uh, What do you think of people under 18 playing Battlefield or shooters in general? Now, personally, um, I'm not hugely opposed to younger kids playing shooters. I think they've they've really come a long way in terms of taking gore out of things now. It's kind of funny, but like, you know, we're playing Battlefield. I haven't, you hardly see any blood in Battlefield. Uh, games actually used to be much more gory with like Unreal Tournament and stuff. You'd shoot a guy with a rocket launcher and body parts would go flying everywhere. And that's what I grew up with. And I was playing those games when I was a young kid. And sorry if you guys can hear all that vibrating. There's this crazy construction project going on outside my window right now. But in terms of enforcing actual age restrictions and stuff on video games, I would much rather let that kind of thing be up to the parents themselves. Um, and the way that kids react to violence in video games and if they respect it or become desensitized to it or just don't really understand what's going on, um, that thing is really up to the parents and it's their responsibility to educate their kids on it. So, And I really wish uh, violence in video games wasn't such a big deal right now because I think it's often made the scapegoat of negligent parenting. And uh, honestly, that's, that's the truth of the matter. You look at these kids uh, who have done really stupid things and they're making a big deal about it on TV and they go, oh, he played Grand Theft Auto or something like that and then tried to mimic it. Well, where the heck were the parents? Did the parents let this kid have Grand Theft Auto? Did they explain to him about violence? You know, there's certain things you can't control, but at the same time, in most of these situations that I've seen made really big public uh, examples of violence in video games being bad, the parents are just doing a terrible job of uh, controlling their kids or educating them about the subject. Next question comes from Cocourt2 who says, do you have any famous dog tags? And uh, considering that I've got like over 50,000 kills and I just got my knife service star, meaning 100 kills with the knife, um, I really don't think I have a lot. I'm not really concerned with dog tags. I don't like um, how knifing plays a role in Battlefield. So I kind of just avoid it because I don't think it's a good tactical option. Next question comes from NASA Naxon, and I didn't answer this last time even though it got a lot of thumbs up, but it, here it is again with tons of thumbs up, so I guess I gotta address this. Have you ever killed a man? No, I have never killed a man, but if any of the trolls on Reddit want to volunteer for that opportunity, you know, I'm up for trying new things. Stains87 asks, if you were tiny enough to ride a fox, would you stop doing YouTube commentaries? I am so confused by this question because it's not if you were tiny and you had a fox to ride, would you stop doing commentaries? It's if you were tiny enough to ride a fox, would you stop doing commentaries? So one, I'm confused about how tiny that has to be, and two, 
What are the odds of a tiny person being able to ride a fox in the first place? It seems much more likely for a fox to eat you if you are actually tiny enough to ride it. So uh, if the question is, if I were tiny enough and had a tame fox that was trained for riding with small people, would I stop doing commentaries? Yes, absolutely. Dagon0528 asks, what would be 10 guns that you would want to be added to Battlefield 3? Well, I'm not going to give you 10, but I'll give you one. The AT4. I want my guided rocket launcher that I can control after it's been fired. That was the best thing in Bad Company 2. I know I talk about Bad Company 2 as if it's the greatest Battlefield game ever, but there was just so many elements of Bad Company 2 that were awesome and so many of them just didn't carry over into Battlefield 3 so I'm really disappointed about that and the AT4 is one of them. Let us take down air vehicles with skill as opposed to the boring old lock-on game. Everybody hates that. J Iron B Muhammad asks, do you think it would be a great idea to make the environment more interactive like driving civilian cars, bikes, and riding trains or controlling cranes and other equipment? What are your thoughts about this? I think in moderation it would be cool, but it also seems a little bit out of place. Like, at first thought, the idea of moving trains through some of the train yards would be cool, but then again, who the heck would be driving a train through a train yard during a war? You know, it's just not going to happen. Um, the crane aspect could be kind of neat, but I feel these elements would ultimately make Battlefield 3 look less like a full-on war battle going on and more like some sort of crazy civilian conflict with cranes and cars and bicycles and stuff. I mean, I think it would be, it would end up just looking silly and there would be a lot of trolling going on with civilian vehicles and cranes and other stuff. I think it would just be a little bit goofy. It's a neat idea, but I think it would... Um, be much better fit for a less serious game. 64 Bytes asks, for the second time, I saw this question the first time around. He has level cap, do you like burritos? If so, describe the perfect burrito. And I will say one of the better things about living in Southern California is the Mexican food. And in Irvine, there's this place called Antajitos Don Juan. It's this small little Mexican food place that makes the absolute best burrito I've ever had. And it's just huge. It's like the size of a baby. And yes, I'm comparing a burrito to a baby because it doesn't matter. This burrito is so good, there's literally nothing that could turn me off of it. It is called a Super Burrito Mojado. So it's a giant wet burrito with tons of cheese on top. Um, and then you get it with some pork inside there. It's got everything, guacamole, sour cream. But there's just something about the ingredients that are like season just right i don't know what it is you know obviously the chef isn't going to give up his recipe but if you're in irvine go to antajitos don juan and get the super burrito mojado with carnitas nate hamp asks how do you stay healthy while being a youtuber and that is actually a good question especially when you start getting older and getting married when you get married oftentimes your wife wants to have three meals a day or sit down for dinner if you're a full-time gamer, your metabolism just does not support the average amount of food intake that most people have. So you either got to stay physical, go out and do sports, or you got to uh, eat less. Now, in terms of actually being healthy and ergonomic is a big thing. And uh, I've started to game standing up. I use a new standing desk that can actually adjust between standing and sitting. And that's really good for your back and other things. I'm actually going to do a review on that. So uh, stay tuned if you want to see a sit-stand desk review. And that's it for this episode of Mailbox, guys. Thanks for submitting your questions. Again, if I didn't get around to your questions, there's a lot of good ones. Uh, just resubmit them for the next video, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to rate it, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.